1972, the Taft Broadcasting Company opened Kings Island in Mason, Ohio, and it was an instant success. Before that year was even over, the company was looking to expand and open another theme park. They formed a partnership with Top Value Enterprises to form Family Leisure Centers and quickly began work on their next project. The site chosen was a 400-acre plot of land in Doswell, Virginia, about 25 miles north of Richmond, right off of I-95. Construction began on October 1st, 1972, with the idea of Kings Island's design in mind. The park was instantly faced with a challenge, as Anheuser-Busch, the owner and operators of Busch Gardens in Tampa, Florida, was also looking to expand their theme park division, and they chose Williamsburg, Virginia, just 70 miles away, as their site to open a park. So they were going to have stiff competition from day one. King's Dominion was near completion by 1974, and they decided to host a soft opening that year, featuring the Lion Country Safari, a drive through animal safari, which looks pretty f***ing intense to me, and the Scooby-Doo roller coaster. The park's official grand opening was held the following year on May 3rd, 1975, and it was both a huge success and a near disaster, as over a hundred thousand people showed up causing a 10 mile traffic jam on all nearby highways about 50,000 people were let in and 50,000 were turned away wow opening year areas included international street serving as the park's main street old virginia coney island the lion country safari of course and the happy land of Hanna barbera the kids section some of the park's opening year attractions included the eiffel tower a one-third scale replica and the visual icon of the park also serving as an observation deck as well. The infamous Rebel Yell, a PTC wood racing roller coaster. The Shenandoah Lumber Company, the park's log flume. The previously mentioned Scooby-Doo, a PTC kids wooden roller coaster. Galaxy, a classic Zyklon model. The Sky Ride, and a classic train ride called the Old Dominion Line. Opening year proved to be a huge success for the park and the company. The following year saw the Coney Island area of the park getting renamed Candy Apple Grove and the addition of the Apple Turnover, a Schwarzkopf Enterprise. 1977 saw another Schwarzkopf ride come to the park. King Cobra, one of his shuttle loop models, arrived with huge fanfare, because Anton Schwarzkopf is the f***ing man. 1978 saw a lodging expansion to the park, as the King's Hideaway Campground was added. It still remains open today as a joint partnership between the corporate campground conglomerate KOA and Cedar Fair. 1979 saw a unique expansion in terms of attraction. The Lost World Mountain, a very interesting concept. A 17-story mock-up mountain that cost $7 million to build, but featured three attractions inside. The Journey to Atlantis, which was pretty much a fancy log flume. The Land of Deuce, a children's mine train. And Time Shaft, a rotor. The journey to Atlantis did not last long, however, and the very following year it was renamed the Haunted River. Two years later, in 1982, we saw the Taft Broadcast Company try to recreate some of the magic they created with their iconic roller coaster, The Beast, at Kings Island. So they did their second in-house roller coaster, this one at Kings Dominion, known as Grizzly. It didn't quite match the legacy that The Beast built for itself, but it's still a decently fun ride. In 1983, Taft Broadcasting Company sold its parks to King's Entertainment Company for $167.5 million. The three parks involved in the sale were King's Island, of course King's Dominion, and Carowinds. That same year also saw the addition of Whitewater Canyon, an Intamin Rapids attraction. 1984 saw Journey to the Land of Deuce get rethemed to Smurf Mountain, plus Berserker, an Intamin Looping Starship, was added and the closure of the galaxy. It was around this time frame too that the Lion Country Safari area of the park began referring to itself as Safari Village. 1985 saw Diamond Falls added to the park, a standard shoot the shoots attraction. 1986 saw the closure of King Cobra, where it was relocated to Jolly Roger Amusement Park in Ocean City, Maryland. But when there's a closure, there's usually also an addition. And this was the case, as the park received a Togo stand-up uh, roller coaster in shockwave. 1987 saw park ownership kind of change hands as American Financial bought all the King's Entertainment Company properties 
but allowed King's Entertainment to continue to operate all of the park. 1988 saw Avalanche, a mock bobsled coaster, which still operates today and is the last of its kind. 1991 saw an addition of an aerodynamics custom-made looping coaster, an anaconda. Visually, it's a very pretty roller coaster built right on the lake, but it's notoriously rough and eh. 1992 saw a huge addition as Hurricane Reef Water Park was added in the very back. 1993 was a huge year on the corporate end as American Financial sold all of their parks to the movie company Paramount, and the park began being referred to as Paramount's. King's Dominion, and their first order of business was to close an ass load of rides. Apple Turnover, Smurf Mountain, and the infamous Lion Country Safari were all closed and removed. Now with Paramount in control of the park, they had to inject some intellectual property, and in 1994 they debuted a new area, the Wayne's World area, themed after the smash hit Saturday Night Live skit Wayne's World, and bringing with it a new roller coaster, an International Coasters Incorporated triple out and back wooden coaster called The Hurler. 1995 saw another new area added to the park, Nickelodeon Splat City, a family area based off of Nickelodeon TV shows. That year also saw the closure of the Old Dominion Line, the Skyride, and Lost World Mountain. It was also around this time frame that the Safari Village area of the park began being referred to as Congo, based off that piece of shit movie from Paramount. 1996 saw Outer Limits Flight of Fear come to the park, a Premier Rides indoor launched coaster completely in the dark. Very fun ride. 1997 saw the Hanna-Barbera Land Kids Area get rethemed to Kidsville, and the Scooby-Doo roller coaster was renamed Scooby-Doo Ghoster Coaster, and we also saw a new kids coaster in Taxi Jam. 1998 saw the Lost World Mountain structure get retooled for Volcano the Blast Coaster, an Intamin suspended catapult coaster. Very unique ride, they only built one of them and in my opinion, was the best decision Paramount made while they had control of the park. 1999 saw the Hurricane Reef Water Park get renamed to Waterworks to generalize all of Paramount's water parks. 2000 saw Nick Splat City get renamed to Nick Central, and the Outer Limits Flight of Fear was renamed as the Outer Limits was dropped, and it's just simply known as Flight of Fear, which it's still known as today. 2001 saw Candy Apple Grove get combined with the Wayne's World section, and was just simply known as The Grove, which a lot of people were like, uh, hey, what the f are you doing, Paramount? That same year was the debut year of Fear Fest in the park, the park's Halloween extravaganza. But the biggest news of that year, however, came from Hypersonic XLC, an SNS compressed air launch coaster, shooting riders 165 feet in the air and reaching speeds of 80 miles per hour. It was quite an intense ride, but from the minute it opened, it was plagued with mechanical issues. 2002 saw Ricochet added to the park, a mock wild mouse coaster, perfect for families, experiencing a roller coaster all together for the first time. And also that year was the closure of Diamond Falls. 2003 saw the addition of the aptly named Drop Tower, Stunt Tower. 2004 saw Scooby-Doo and the Haunted Mansion added to the park, a fun interactive dark shooter. 2005 saw Tomb Raider Firefall, a giant Huss top spin that provided quite an exhilarating ride experience. 2006 saw the addition of the Italian Job Turbo Coaster, a premier family launched roller coaster that's highly themed. Toward the end of the 2006 season, a bomb was dropped as Paramount decided to sell all of their parks. The highest bidder was Cedar Fair for $1.2 billion. Under the first full season under Cedar Fair's ownership, Paramount was dropped from the park's name and was once again known as King's Dominion. Also, Fear Fest was renamed Halloween Haunt, and the Italian Job Turbo Coaster was renamed Backlot Stunt Coaster. But the most important news to come out of 2007 was the closure of Hypersonic XLC, as Cedar Fair just thought, what the f is this monstrosity, and put it up for sale. 2008 saw the rest of the Paramount IP disappear as Tomb Raider Firefall was renamed The Crip, and the Drop Tower Stunt Tower was renamed Drop Tower Scream Zone. But the biggest news to come out of 2008 was the addition of Dominator, a huge B&M roller coaster purchased from the recently defunct Geauga Lake in Aurora, Ohio. 2009 saw the other two rides purchased from Geauga Lake added to the park, El Dorado, a falling star model, and Americana, the first Ferris wheel added to King's Dominion. 2010 saw the addition of Planet Snoopy, another kids area, and the two Scooby-Doo attractions were forced to lose Scooby that year, as the Scooby-Doo Ghoster Coaster 
was just simply called Ghoster Coaster, and the Scooby-Doo Haunted Mansion was renamed and rethemed to Boo Blasters on Haunted Hill. But the biggest news easily of 2010 was the addition of arguably the most popular ride in the park, Intimidator 305, a 305 foot tall Intamin Giga Coaster and reaches speeds of 90 miles per hour. And once that initial drop is over, this thing stays pretty close to the ground, providing an ultra intense ride experience. 2011 saw El Dorado hit the road already, did not last long. 2012 was the debut of Fastlane in the park, plus Taxi Jam was rethemed to the Great Pumpkin Coaster and the Dinosaurs Live walkthrough attraction, featuring large animatronic dinosaurs. I actually quite enjoyed it. Also in 2012 saw the addition of Windseeker, a 300 plus foot tall Mondial giant swing ride. Those things are scary. 2013 saw Planet Snoopy and the Kidsville area merged into one, keeping the name Planet Snoopy. 2014, the park celebrated its 40 year anniversary. For nostalgic purposes, renamed the Congo area of the park back to Safari Village and the Grove back to Candy Apple Grove. Well done. And the Ghoster Coaster was renamed Woodstock Express that year. 2015 Waterworks was renamed Soak City, and we also saw two roller coasters close up shop that year, in the Hurler and Shockwave. 2016 saw the addition of Delirium, a Mondial Revolution attraction, standing 115 feet tall. Those things are a lot of fun. 2017 saw two renames, as Ricochet was renamed Apple Zapple, and Rebel Yell was appropriately renamed to Racer 75. 2018 proved to be quite significant, as we saw what was done with the Hurler skeleton, as it had been SBNO for nearly three years at that point, and what a perfect job for RMC to come sprinkle their magic dust on, and transform that into Twisted Timbers, a fun-packed, adrenaline-filled ride. Also that year we saw the closure of Dinosaurs Alive, and the closure of Volcano the Blast Coaster. It was a lot of people's favorites, but it was just way too much to maintain, and time to go. The park did not open at all in the summertime in 2020 due to obvious reason. But at the very end of the year, they were able to open for a short period of time and debut something kind of new and cool. Taste of the season, primarily a food extravaganza. In that year, it was also decided to close the crypt for good. King's Dominion though, you really can't go wrong with it. Pretty well-rounded park, got some great thrill rides, some very good family rides, and plus being a Cedar Fair park, they take pride in their properties, and it shows. King's Dominion, like I said, can't go wrong.